Hello everybody, it's John, back with another video. And so last year I picked up my Model 3, but I had no idea how good the car was going to be. But before I got it, I consumed that much content on it. I genuinely thought I knew everything about the car, but I didn't far from it. So with my videos, I wanted to provide new and prospective owners my take on the car, because I'm sure there are people out there like me who watch anything and everything about Teslas. So these are my top 10 reasons why I love this car, and why it's the best car I think still even in 2021. So I absolutely love how this car looks. Well, people say it blends in, but I think differently, as I always do. I think the car stands out. I think it looks pretty sporty, and for a family car, I think it offers something different to the typical German cars. The front end's really nice, and it's one of those cars where the pictures don't really do it justice. I've removed the aero covers, and I'll probably be adding the spoiler at some point in the future. And I've also removed all the scaffolding from the number plates at the front to give it a minimalist look. But I will be going one step further with that and buying actual stick-on plates rather than the standard vinyl plates. So definitely subscribe to see those being applied because I'll be making a video about them. So the autopilot is more than just a cruise control. It actually follows the road, it brakes, it accelerates and it comes to a complete stop. I found it quite unbelievable. And to activate it, you need to wait until it's available by the icon on the wheel being grey. And then you press the right hand stalk down twice. Now the icon turns blue. And you need to keep your hands on the wheel for safety or it will disengage. And for open roads such as motorways or highways in the US, it really does take the stress out of driving. Now I've had some real gas guzzlers. But to compare, the costs are very, very low. My only expense is electricity, but to cover around 6,000 miles, as I've done now, it's cost me about $100, and that's because I utilise free charging when I'm at work, and in the town I work, and I charge at night time when it's really cheap. So check out my Octopus referral energy link in the description below. And if you can compare that to my last car, which cost me around $25 for 18 miles, you can quickly see the difference. Surfacing is almost non-existent, because... I don't have to worry about oil or plugs or exhausts or DPF filters. I've had problems with those before. Look, I've owned some really leery cars over the years and even noisy motorbikes. But there's something about driving an electric car that makes engine noises seem unnecessary and old. Especially the noises made from modern Euro 5 and the Euro 6 engines that just sound like washing machines anyway. That's how they're made to sound these days. When you feel like you're sneaking around, and because sometimes I come home work in the early hours of the morning, I love to be able to roll up the estate in utter silence and not annoy any of my neighbours, which I would have done on my motorbikes. And it also means you can mash the throttle sometimes and not really annoy anybody with any antisocial noises. So preheating the car, this has been a lifesaver. I got the car in winter. We had a particularly bad winter when I picked the car up around Christmas time. And it's just one of the best features of the car, particularly in Britain. And I'm sure in some of the coldest places of the United States as well and Canada. Now I've had it before in other cars, but the one in the Tesla just seems to be that much better at it, a lot more efficient. And if you're anything like me, you'll stand there in the freezing cold, we've all done it, scraping the ice off the car. Or you'll let the car idle for 10 minutes until it warms up. Which is obviously a theft risk. You don't want somebody coming and stealing your car. And it's also not particularly great for the environment with the car chugging out a load of smoke. And if you've got a loud exhaust, you're probably going to annoy your neighbours. So if you open the app and press a couple of buttons to warm the car up. If you use the car every morning at a certain time, say you go to work for 9 o'clock in the morning, then you can set the car to do it automatically. Now I didn't think I'd bother with YouTube and Netflix in the car. I didn't really see the point, but actually, I do. And there's been plenty of times where I've been with my daughter, and we've been sat in the car waiting, we've put Netflix on, or she puts Netflix on. And with a great sound system, it's just brilliant. Then there's Spotify. If you don't have it, then this might convince you to get a standalone account. But you don't actually need to have it for the car, because the car has its own account. And it's really convenient just to press the button on the wheel and speak your choice of music, and the car just does the rest. And it's got a really smart, good-looking interface too. So I've actually covered charging at home in another video, so go and check that out. 
But the convenience of doing this is something I never want to lose now, and you don't have to have a Tesla for it. Pulling up and plugging in, it takes around 10 seconds, and that's it. It really is no effort, and not having to go to a gas station is something to behold. Smelling the fuel and touching those pumps. I haven't done it in months now, and I don't want to go back. Plugging it in at my local shops is free, so that's why my running costs are so low. And you just don't get that with a petrol car. I can't imagine handing over the best part of £100 or $100 for some liquid that you just burn into the atmosphere. It just seems really weird to me now. I went for the standard range plus which will do about 220 miles to a full charge and in the UK that's absolutely plenty I think. And that's on the basis of the Tesla charging network just being flawless, it really is a game changer. 220 miles is certainly plenty for me. And again, I've covered this in another video, but setting the destination on your navigation screen is all you have to do in this car. The car will route you like any other sat-nav does, but it will route you through Tesla superchargers. Not only that, it's so accurate in its energy usage, it can calculate the amount of time that you're actually going to have to be there for. And when I did a 900 mile round trip this year, some of the stops were hardly enough time to get a cup of coffee. In fact, on some of the charges, I overcharged the car. I was there for too long. So being able to control most features from the phone is really convenient. Checking where the car is, the remaining battery, dealing with your climate control and the charging status and looking at any software updates that might be available is really useful. And I can lock and unlock the car from the other side of the world if I wanted. I could even start the car remotely so if I wanted somebody else to drive the car while I'm away, well I can do that from the app. It would be good to hear audio from the car or have footage from the cameras via the phone so you can see what's going on around the car in the event of the car alarm going off because you do get a notification when that happens too. So everybody knows about Tesla's performance and I love how quick this car is and it's the slowest one they make. I've had some quick cars in the past but this is the quickest and it's how it delivers its power. It's just instantaneous either on or off and the sensation of just planting your foot is ridiculous. There's no turbo to spool up, there's no gears to change down, it's just a different. It's a bit like a go-kart in that respect. Hit the pedal and you're slingshotted off the line in an instant. All electric cars have that sensation to varying degrees, it just so happens that Tesla have turned it up to 11. Now I test drove the Mini Electric and while it's not as quick as a Tesla, even that fired you off the line pretty rapid. The great bit is that Every time you do put your foot down in a Tesla or any electric car from a standstill, you know you're not chugging loads of expensive fuel. And following on from that, slowing down again is great. You're used to using one pedal. So it means that you aren't using your brake pads and your discs, which obviously don't wear them out. But more than that, being able to recoup energy down long hills is really quite a satisfying thing. Okay, you don't get all the energy back that you spent going up the hill in the first place, but tell me about a petrol car that puts fuel in the tank when you're going downhill. Something I only just noticed this past few days actually is when the accelerator pedal is fully disengaged, the graphic on the screen illuminates and the brake lights show the real brake lights have been activated and it's little points like that that make it appear that Tesla have been paying attention to details. And once you've driven a Tesla or any other electric car really it's hard to think why you'd want to go back, I certainly don't want to. So do you have any questions about the car? Perhaps you're not sure which one to go for. Check out my other videos and uh, hopefully they'll give you the final push. But don't forget to use my referral link in the description below. And please, as ever, consider subscribing. Until next time.